Al-Andalus Arabic, Al-Andalus trans. Al-Andalus, Spanish, Al-Andalus, Portuguese, Al-Andalus, Catalan, Al-Andalus, Berber, Andalus, also known as Muslim Spain, Muslim Iberia, or Islamic Iberia, was a medieval Muslim territory and cultural domain that in its early period occupied most of Iberia, today's Portugal and Spain. At its greatest geographical extent, it occupied the northwest of the Iberian Peninsula and a part of present-day southern France Septimania 8th century and for nearly a century 9th -10th centuries extended its control from Frosinet over the Alpine passes which connect Italy with the remainder of Western Europe. The name more generally describes the parts of the peninsula governed by Muslims given the generic name of Moors at various times between 711 and 1492, though the boundaries changed constantly as the Christian Reconquista progressed, eventually shrinking to the south around modern-day Andalusia and then to the Emirate of Granada. Following the Umayyad conquest of Hispania, Al-Andalus, then at its greatest extent, was divided into five administrative units, corresponding roughly to modern Andalusia, Portugal and Galicia, Castile and Leon, Navarre, Aragon, the county of Barcelona, and Septimania. As a political domain, it successively constituted a province of the Umayyad Caliphate, initiated by the Caliph al-Walid I (711–750), the Emirate of Cordoba (c. 750–929), the Caliphate of Cordoba (929–1031), and the Caliphate of Cordoba's Taifa (successor kingdoms). Rule under these kingdoms led to a rise in cultural exchange and cooperation between Muslims and Christians. Christians and Jews were subject to a special tax called jizya, to the state, which in return provided internal autonomy in practicing their religion and offered the same level of protections by the Muslim rulers. Under the Caliphate of Cordoba, Al Andalus was a beacon of learning, and the city of Cordoba, the largest in Europe, became one of the leading cultural and economic centers throughout the Mediterranean basin, Europe, and the Islamic world. Achievements that advanced Islamic and Western science came from Al-Andalus, including major advances in trigonometry astronomy surgery pharmacology agronomy Ibn Basil and Abu el kher al-Ishbili, and other fields. Al-Andalus became a major educational center for Europe and the lands around the Mediterranean Sea as well as a conduit for culture and science between the Islamic and Christian worlds. For much of its history, Al-Andalus existed in conflict with Christian kingdoms to the north. After the fall of the Umayyad Caliphate, Al-Andalus was fragmented into minor states and principalities. Attacks from the Christians intensified, led by the Castilians under Alfonso VI. The Almoravid Empire intervened and repelled the Christian attacks on the region, deposing the weak Andalusi Muslim princes and included Al-Andalus under direct Berber rule. In the next century and a half, Al-Andalus became a province of the Berber Muslim empires of the Almoravids and Almohads, both based in Marrakesh. Ultimately, the Christian kingdoms in the north of the Iberian Peninsula overpowered the Muslim states to the south. In 1085, Alfonso VI captured Toledo, starting a gradual decline of Muslim power. With the fall of Córdoba in 1236, most of the south quickly fell under Christian rule and the Emirate of Granada became a tributary state of the Kingdom of Castile two years later. In 1249, the Portuguese Reconquista culminated with the conquest of the Algarve by Afonso III, leaving Granada as the last Muslim state on the Iberian Peninsula. Finally, on January 2, 1492, Emir Muhammad XII surrendered the Emirate of Granada to Queen Isabella I of Castile, completing the Christian Reconquista of the peninsula. Although Al-Andalus ended as a political entity, the nearly eight centuries of Islamic rule which preceded and accompanied the early formation of the Spanish nation-state and identity has left a profound effect on the country's culture and language, particularly in Andalusia. Name The toponym Al-Andalus is first attested by inscriptions on coins minted in 716 by the new Muslim government of Iberia. These coins, called dinars, were inscribed in both Latin and Arabic. The etymology of the name, Al-Andalus, has traditionally been derived from the name of the Vandals, however, proposals since the 1980s have challenged this contention. In 1986, Joaquin Valve proposed that Al-Andalus 
was a corruption of the name Atlantis. Halm in 1989 derived the name from a Gothic term, asterisk Landolouts, and in 2002, Bossong suggested its derivation from a pre Roman substrate. History Province of the Umayyad Caliphate During the Caliphate of the Umayyad Caliph al-Walid I, the commander Tariq ibn Ziyad led a small force that landed at Gibraltar on April 30, 711, ostensibly to intervene in a Visigothic civil war. After a decisive victory over King Radak at the Battle of Guadalete on July 19, 711, Tariq ibn Ziyad, joined by Arab governor Musa ibn Nusayr of Ifriqiya, brought most of the Visigothic kingdom under Muslim occupation in a seven-year campaign. They crossed the Pyrenees and occupied Visigothic Septimania in southern France. Most of the Iberian Peninsula became part of the expanding Umayyad Empire, under the name of Al-Andalus. It was organized as a province subordinate to Ifriqiya, so, for the first few decades, the governors of Al-Andalus were appointed by the Emir of Kairouan, rather than the Caliph in Damascus. The regional capital was set at Córdoba, and the first influx of Muslim settlers was widely distributed. The small army Tariq led in the initial conquest consisted mostly of Berbers, while Musa's largely Arab force of over 12,000 soldiers was accompanied by a group of Mawali Arabic, Mawali that is, non-Arab Muslims, who were clients of the Arabs. The Berber soldiers accompanying Tariq were garrisoned in the center and the north of the peninsula, as well as in the Pyrenees, while the Berber colonists who followed settled in all parts of the country, north, east, south and west. Visigothic lords who agreed to recognize Muslim suzerainty were allowed to retain their fiefs notably, in Mercia, Galicia, and the Ebro Valley. Resistant Visigoths took refuge in the Cantabrian highlands, where they carved out a rump state, the Kingdom of Asturias. In the 720s, the Al-Andalus governors launched several Saifa raids into Aquitaine, but were severely defeated by Duke Odo the Great of Aquitaine at the Battle of Toulouse 721. However, after crushing Odo's Berber ally Uthman ibn Nisa on the eastern Pyrenees, Abdul Rahman al Ghafiqi led an expedition north across the western Pyrenees and defeated the Aquitanian duke, who in turn appealed to the Frankish leader Charles Martel for assistance, offering to place himself under Carolingian sovereignty. At the Battle of Poitiers in 732, the Al Andalus raiding army was defeated by Charles Martel. In 734, the Andalusi launched raids to the east, capturing Avignon and Arles and overran much of Provence. In 737, they travelled up the Rhone Valley, reaching as far north as Burgundy. Charles Martel of the Franks, with the assistance of Liutprand of the Lombards, invaded Burgundy and Provence and expelled the raiders by 739. Relations between Arabs and Berbers in Al-Andalus had been tense in the years after the conquest. Berbers heavily outnumbered the Arabs in the province, had done the bulk of the fighting, and were assigned the harsher duties e.g. garrisoning the more troubled areas. Although some Arab governors had cultivated their Berber lieutenants, others had grievously mistreated them. Mutinies by Berber soldiers were frequent, e.g., in 729, the Berber commander Munuz had revolted and managed to carve out a rebel state in Sardinia for a while. In 740, a Berber revolt erupted in the Maghreb North Africa. To put down the rebellion, the Umayyad Caliph Hisham dispatched a large Arab army, composed of regiments Juns of Balad Ash Sham, to North Africa. But the great Syrian army was crushed by the Berber rebels at the Battle of Bagdora in Morocco. Heartened by the victories of their North African brethren, the Berbers of Al-Andalus quickly raised their own revolt. Berber garrisons in northern Spain mutinied, deposed their Arab commanders, and organized a large rebel army to march against the strongholds of Toledo, Córdoba, and Algeciras. In 741, Balj B. Bisher led a detachment of some 10,000 of the Arabic-speaking troops referred to as the Syrians across the straits. The Arab governor of Al-Andalus, joined by this force, crushed the Berber rebels in a series of ferocious battles in 742. However, a quarrel immediately erupted between the Syrian commanders and the Andalusi, the so-called original Arabs, of the earlier contingents. The Syrians defeated them at the hard-fought Battle of Aqua Portora in August 742 but were too few to impose themselves on the province. 
The quarrel was settled in 743 when Abu el Qadr al Husam, the new governor of al Andalus, assigned the Syrians to regimental fiefs across al Andalus. The Damascus Jund was established in Elvira, Granada, the Jordan Jund in Rayu, Malaga and Arcadona, the Jund Falastin in Medina Sidonia and Jerez, the Emesa HIMs Jund in Seville and Niebla, and the Kinazrin Jund in Jaan. The Egypt Jund was divided between Beja Alentejo in the west and Tudmir Mercia in the east. The arrival of the Syrians substantially increased the Arab element in the Iberian Peninsula and helped strengthen the Muslim hold on the south. However, at the same time, unwilling to be governed, the Syrian Junds carried on an existence of autonomous feudal anarchy, severely destabilizing the authority of the governor of Al-Andalus. A second significant consequence of the revolt was the expansion of the Kingdom of the Asturias, hitherto confined to enclaves in the Cantabrian highlands. After the rebellious Berber garrisons evacuated the northern frontier fortresses, the Christian king Alfonso I of Asturias set about immediately seizing the empty forts for himself, quickly adding the northwestern provinces of Galicia and Leon to his fledgling kingdom. The Asturians evacuated the Christian populations from the towns and villages of the Galician Leonese lowlands, creating an empty buffer zone in the Douro River Valley, the Desert of the Duero. This newly emptied frontier remained roughly in place for the next few centuries as the boundary between the Christian North and the Islamic South. Between this frontier and its heartland in the south, the Al-Andalus state had three large March territories Thugger, the Lower March capital initially at Merida, later Badajoz, the Middle March centered at Toledo, and the Upper March centered at Zaragoza. These disturbances and disorders also allowed the Franks, now under the leadership of Pepin the Short, to invade the strategic strip of Septimania in 752, hoping to deprive Al-Andalus of an easy launching pad for raids into Francia. After a lengthy siege, the last Arab stronghold, the citadel of Narbonne, finally fell to the Franks in 759. Al-Andalus was sealed off at the Pyrenees. The third consequence of the Berber revolt was the collapse of the authority of the Damascus Caliphate over the western provinces. With the Umayyad caliphs distracted by the challenge of the Abbasids in the east, the western provinces of the Maghreb and Al-Andalus spun out of their control. From around 745, the Firids, an illustrious local Arab clan descended from Oqba ibn Nafi al-Firi, seized power in the western provinces and ruled them almost as a private family empire of their own, Abd al-Rahman ibn Habib al-Firi in Ifriqiya and Yusuf al-Firi in al-Andalus. The Firids welcomed the fall of the Umayyads in the east, in 750, and sought to reach an understanding with the Abbasids, hoping they might be allowed to continue their autonomous existence. But when the Abbasids rejected the offer and demanded submission, the Firids declared independence and, probably out of spite, invited the deposed remnants of the Umayyad clan to take refuge in their dominions. It was a fateful decision that they soon regretted, for the Umayyads, the sons and grandsons of caliphs, had a more legitimate claim to rule than the Firids themselves. Rebellious-minded local lords, disenchanted with the autocratic rule of the Firids, conspired with the arriving Umayyad exiles. Umayyad Emirate and Caliphate of Córdoba In 756, the exiled Umayyad prince Abd al-Rahman I nicknamed al the immigrant, ousted Yusuf al-Firi to establish himself as the emir of Córdoba. He refused to submit to the Abbasid caliph, as Abbasid forces had killed most of his family. Over a 30-year reign, he established a tenuous rule over much of Al-Andalus, overcoming partisans of both the Al-Firi family and of the Abbasid Caliph. For the next century and a half, his descendants continued as emirs of Cordoba with nominal control over the rest of Al-Andalus and sometimes parts of western North Africa, but with real control, particularly over the marches along the Christian border, vacillating depending on the competence of the individual emir. Indeed, the power of Emir Abdallah ibn Muhammad circa 900 did not extend beyond Cordoba itself. But his grandson Abd al-Rahman III, who succeeded him in 912, not only rapidly restored Umayyad power throughout al-Andalus but extended it into western North Africa as well. In 929 he proclaimed himself caliph, elevating the emirate to a position competing in prestige not only with the Abbasid caliph in Baghdad but also the Fatimid caliph in Tunis, with whom he was competing for control of North Africa. The period of the caliphate is seen as the Golden Age of Al-Andalus. 
Crops produced using irrigation, along with food imported from the Middle East, provided the area around Córdoba and some other Andalusí cities with an agricultural economic sector that was the most advanced in Europe by far, sparking the Arab agricultural revolution. Among European cities, Córdoba under the Caliphate, with a population of perhaps 500,000, eventually overtook Constantinople as the largest and most prosperous city in Europe. Within the Islamic world, Córdoba was one of the leading cultural centers. The work of its most important philosophers and scientists notably Abulcasis and Averroes had a major influence on the intellectual life of medieval Europe. Muslims and non-Muslims often came from abroad to study in the famous libraries and universities of Al-Andalus, mainly after the reconquest of Toledo in 1085 and the establishment of translation institutions such as the Toledo School of Translators. The most noted of those was Michael Scott c. 1175 to c. 1235, who took the works of Ibn Rushd Averroes, and Ibn Sina Avicenna, to Italy. This transmission of ideas remains one of the greatest in history, significantly affecting the formation of the European Renaissance. Taifas <inaudible> <inaudible> period <inaudible> The Caliphate of Córdoba effectively collapsed during a ruinous civil war between 1009 and 1013, although it was not finally abolished until 1031 when Al-Andalus broke up into a number of mostly independent mini-states and principalities called taifas. In 1013, invading Berbers sacked Córdoba, massacring its inhabitants, pillaging the city, and burning the palace complex to the ground. After 1031, the taifas were generally too weak to defend themselves against repeated raids and demands for tribute from the Christian states to the north and west, which were known to the Muslims as the Galician nations, and which had spread from their initial strongholds in Galicia, Asturias, Chantabria, the Basque Country, and the Carolingian Marca Hispanica to become the kingdoms of Navarre, Leon, Portugal, Castile and Aragon, and the county of Barcelona. Eventually raids turned into conquests, and in response the Taifa kings were forced to request help from the Almoravids, Muslim Berber rulers of the Maghreb. Their desperate maneuver would eventually fall to their disadvantage, however, as the Almoravids they had summoned from the south went on to conquer and annex all the Taifa kingdoms. <laughs> Almoravids, Almohads, and Marinids In 1086 the Almoravid ruler of Morocco, Yusuf ibn Tashfin, was invited by the Muslim princes in Iberia to defend them against Alfonso VI, King of Castile and Leon. In that year, Tashfin crossed the straits to Algeciras and inflicted a severe defeat on the Christians at the Battle of Sagrajas. By 1094, ibn Tashfin had removed all Muslim princes in Iberia and had annexed their states, except for the one at Zaragoza. He also regained Valencia from the Christians. The Almoravids were succeeded by the Almohads, another Berber dynasty, after the victory of Abu Yusuf Yaqub al-Mansur over the Castilian Alfonso VIII at the Battle of Alarcos in 1195. In 1212, a coalition of Christian kings under the leadership of the Castilian Alfonso VIII defeated the Almohads at the Battle of Las Navas de Toulouse. The Almohads continued to rule al-Andalus for another decade, though with much reduced power and prestige. The civil wars following the death of Abu Yaqub Yusuf II rapidly led to the re-establishment of taifas. The taifas, newly independent but now weakened, were quickly conquered by Portugal, Castile, and Aragon. After the fall of Murcia 1243 and the Algarve 1249, only the Emirate of Granada survived as a Muslim state, and only as a tributary of Castile until 1492. Most of its tribute was paid in gold that was carried to Iberia from present-day Mali and Burkina Faso through the merchant routes of the Sahara. The last Muslim threat to the Christian kingdoms was the rise of the Marinids in Morocco during the 14th century. They took Granada into their sphere of influence and occupied some of its cities, like Algeciras. However, they were unable to take Tarifa, which held out until the arrival of the Castilian army led by Alfonso XI. The Castilian king, with the help of Afonso IV of Portugal and Peter IV of Aragon, decisively defeated the Marinids at the Battle of Rio Salado in 1340 and took Algeciras in 1344. Gibraltar, then under Grenadian rule, was besieged in 1349-50. Alfonso XI and most of his army perished by the Black Death. 
His successor, Peter of Castile, made peace with the Muslims and turned his attention to Christian lands, starting a period of almost 150 years of rebellions and wars between the Christian states that secured the survival of Granada. Emirate of Granada, its fall, and aftermath From the mid-13th to the late 15th century, the only remaining domain of Al-Andalus was the Emirate of Granada, the last Muslim stronghold in the Iberian Peninsula. The emirate was established by Muhammad ibn al-Amar in 1230 and was ruled by the Nasra dynasty, the longest reigning dynasty in the history of Al-Andalus. Although surrounded by Castilian lands, the emirate was wealthy through being tightly integrated in Mediterranean trade networks and enjoyed a period of considerable cultural and economic prosperity. However, for most of its existence Granada was a tributary state, with Nasra emirs paying tribute to Castilian kings. Granada's status as a tributary state and its favorable geographic location, with the Sierra Nevada as a natural barrier, helped to prolong Nasra rule and allowed the emirate to prosper as a regional entrepot with the Maghreb and the rest of Africa. The city of Granada also served as a refuge for Muslims fleeing during the Reconquista, accepting numerous Muslims expelled from Christian-controlled areas, doubling the size of the city and even becoming one of the largest in Europe throughout the 15th century in terms of population. In 1469, the marriage of Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile signaled the launch of the final assault on the emirate. The king and queen convinced Pope Sixtus IV to declare their war a crusade. The Catholic monarchs crushed one center of resistance after another until finally on January 2, 1492, after a long siege, the emirate's last sultan Muhammad XII surrendered the city and the fortress palace, the renowned Alhambra see Fall of Granada. By this time Muslims in Castile numbered half a million. After the fall, 100,000 had died or been enslaved, 200,000 emigrated, and 200,000 remained as the residual population. Many of the Muslim elite, including Muhammad XII, who had been given the area of the Alpujarras Mountains as a principality, found life under Christian rule intolerable and passed over into North Africa. Under the conditions of the capitulations of 1492, the Muslims in Granada were to be allowed to continue to practice their religion. Mass forced conversions of Muslims in 1499 led to a revolt that spread to Alpujarras and the mountains of Ronda. After this uprising, the capitulations were revoked. In 1502, the Catholic monarchs decreed the forced conversion of all Muslims living under the rule of the Crown of Castile. Although in the kingdoms of Aragon and Valencia, both now part of Spain, the open practice of Islam was allowed until 1526. Descendants of the Muslims were subject to expulsions from Spain between 1609 and 1614. See expulsion of the Moriscos. The last mass prosecution against Moriscos for crypto-Islamic practices occurred in Granada in 1727, with most of those convicted receiving relatively light sentences. From then on, indigenous Islam is considered to have been extinguished in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Society The society of Al-Andalus was made up of three main religious groups, Muslims, Christians, and Jews. The Muslims, although united on the religious level, had several ethnic divisions, the main being the distinction between the Arabs and the Berbers. The Arab elite regarded non-Arab Muslims as second-class citizens, and they were particularly scornful of the Berbers. The ethnic structure of Al-Andalus consisted of Arabs at the top of the social scale followed by, in descending order, Berbers, Muladis, Mozarabas, and Jews. Each of these communities inhabited distinct neighborhoods in the cities. In the 10th century a massive conversion of Christians took place, and Muladis Muslims of native Iberian origin, formed the majority of Muslims. The Muladis had spoken in a Romance dialect of Latin called Mozarabic while increasingly adopting the Arabic language, which eventually evolved into the Andalusi Arabic in which Muslims, Jews, and Christians became monolingual in the last surviving Muslim state in the Iberian Peninsula, the Emirate of Granada Eventually, the Muladis, and later the Berber tribes, adopted an Arabic identity like the majority of subject people in Egypt, the Levant, Mesopotamia, and North Africa. Muladis, together with other Muslims, comprised 80% of the population of Al-Andalus by 1100. 
Mozarabs were Christians who had long lived under Muslim and Arab rule, adopting many Arab customs, art, and words, while still maintaining their Christian and Latin rituals and their own Romance languages. The Jewish population worked mainly as tax collectors, in trade, or as doctors or ambassadors. At the end of the 15th century there were about 50,000 Jews in Granada and roughly 100,000 in the whole of Islamic Iberia. Non-Muslims under the Caliphate Non-Muslims were given the status of al al dima the people under protection, with adult men paying a jizya tax, equal to one dinar per year with exemptions for the elderly and the disabled. Those who were neither Christians nor Jews, such as pagans, were given the status of magis. The treatment of non-Muslims in the caliphate has been a subject of considerable debate among scholars and commentators, especially those interested in drawing parallels to the coexistence of Muslims and non-Muslims in the modern world. Jews constituted more than 5% of the population. Al-Andalus was a key center of Jewish life during the early Middle Ages, producing important scholars and one of the most stable and wealthy Jewish communities. The longest period of relative tolerance began after 912 with the reign of Abd ar Rahman III and his son, al Hakam II, when the Jews of al Andalus prospered, devoting themselves to the service of the Caliphate of Cordoba, to the study of the sciences, and to commerce and industry, especially trading in silk and slaves, in this way promoting the prosperity of the country. Southern Iberia became an asylum for the oppressed Jews of other countries. Under the Almoravids and the Almohads, there may have been intermittent persecution of Jews, but sources are extremely scarce and do not give a clear picture, though the situation appears to have deteriorated after 1160. Muslim pogroms against Jews in Al Andalus occurred in Cordoba 1011 and in Granada. 1066. However, massacres of Dhimmis are rare in Islamic history. The Almohads, who had taken control of the Almoravids' Maghribi and Andalusi territories by 1147, far surpassed the Almoravides in fundamentalist outlook, and they treated the non Muslims harshly. Faced with the choice of either death or conversion, many Jews and Christians emigrated. Some, such as the family of Maimonides, fled east to more tolerant Muslim lands. Culture Many ethnicities, religions, and races coexisted in Al-Andalus, each contributing to its intellectual prosperity. Literacy in Islamic Iberia was far more widespread than in many other nations in the West at the time. From the earliest days, the Umayyads wanted to be seen as intellectual rivals to the Abbasids, and for Cordoba to have libraries and educational institutions to rival Baghdad's. Although there was a clear rivalry between the two powers, there was freedom to travel between the two caliphates, which helped spread new ideas and innovations over time. Art and architecture The Alhambra Palace and Fortress best reflects the culture and art of the last centuries of Moorish rule of Al-Andalus. The complex was completed towards the end of the Muslim rule of Spain by Yusuf I (1333–1353) and Muhammad V, Sultan of Granada (1353–1391). Artists and intellectuals took refuge at Alhambra after the Reconquista began to roll back Muslim territory. The site integrates natural qualities with constructed structures and gardens, and is a testament to Moorish culture in Spain and to the skills of the Muslim artisans, craftsmen, and builders of their era. The decoration within the palace comes from the last great period of Andalusian art in Granada, with little of the Byzantine influence of contemporary Abbasid architecture. Artists endlessly reproduced the same forms and trends, creating a new style that developed over the course of the Nasra dynasty using elements created and developed during the centuries of Muslim rule on the peninsula, including the Caliphate Horseshoe Arch, the Almohad Sebka a grid of rhombuses, the Almoravid Palm, and unique combinations of these, as well as innovations such as stilted arches and mukarnas stalactite ceiling decorations. Columns and mukarnas appear in several chambers, and the interiors of numerous palaces are decorated with arabesques and calligraphy. The arabesques of the interior are ascribed to, among other sultans, Yusuf I, Muhammad V, and Ismail I, Sultan of Granada. Philosophy <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Al-Andalus philosophy The historian Said al-Andalusi wrote that Caliph Abd ar rahman III had collected libraries of books and granted patronage to scholars of medicine and ancient sciences. Later, al-Mustansir al went yet further, building a university and libraries in Córdoba. Córdoba became one of the world's leading centers of medicine and philosophical debate. When al-Hakam's son Hisham II took over, real power was ceded to the Hajib, al-Mansur ibn Abi Amir. Al-Mansur was a distinctly religious man and disapproved of the sciences of astronomy, logic, and especially of astrology, so much so that many books on these subjects, which had been preserved and collected at great expense by Al-Hakam II, were burned publicly. With Al-Mansur's death in 1002, interest in philosophy revived. Numerous scholars emerged, including Abu Uthman ibn Fathan, whose masterwork was the philosophical treatise, Tree of Wisdom. Maslama ibn Ahmad al-Majriti died 1008 was an outstanding scholar in astronomy and astrology. He was an intrepid traveler who journeyed all over the Islamic world and beyond and kept in touch with the Brethren of Purity. He is said to have brought the 51 Epistles of the Brethren of Purity to al-Andalus and added the compendium to this work, although it is quite possible that it was added later by another scholar with the name al-Majriti. Another book attributed to al-Majriti is the Gayat al-Hakim, the aim of the sage, which explored a synthesis of Platonism with Hermetic philosophy. Its use of incantations led the book to be widely dismissed in later years, although the Sufi communities continued to study it. A prominent follower of al-Majriti was the philosopher and geometer Abu al-Hakam al-Kirmani who was followed, in turn, by Abu Bakr ibn al-Sayi, usually known in the Arab world as Ibn Baja. Avampace. The Al-Andalus philosopher Averroes (1126–1198) was the founder of the Averroism school of philosophy, and his works and commentaries influenced medieval thought in Western Europe. Another influential Al-Andalus philosopher was Ibn Tufail. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Jewish philosophy and culture. As Jewish thought in Babylonia declined, the tolerance of Al-Andalus made it the new center of Jewish intellectual endeavors. Poets and commentators like Judah Halevi (1086–1145) and Dunash ben Labrat (920–990) contributed to the cultural life of Al-Andalus, but the area was even more important to the development of Jewish philosophy. A stream of Jewish philosophers, cross-fertilizing with Muslim philosophers see joint Jewish and Islamic philosophies, culminated with the widely celebrated Jewish thinker of the Middle Ages, Maimonides (1135–1205). though he did not actually do any of his work in Al-Andalus, his family having fled persecution by the Almohads when he was 13. <laughs> Homosexuality In the book Medieval Iberia, an encyclopedia Daniel Eisenberg describes homosexuality as a key symbolic issue throughout the Middle Ages in Iberia, stating that in Al-Andalus homosexual pleasures were much indulged in by the intellectual and political elite. Evidence includes the behavior of rulers, such as Abd al ra Mn III, al-Hakam II, Hisham II, and al-Mutamid, who openly kept male harems. The memoirs of Abdallah ibn Bulugan, last Zurid king of Granada, makes references to male prostitutes, who charged higher fees and had a higher class of clientele than did their female counterparts, the repeated criticisms of Christians, and especially the abundant poetry. Both pederasty and love between adult males are found. Although homosexual practices were never officially condoned, prohibitions against them were rarely enforced, and usually there was not even a pretense of doing so. Male homosexual relations allowed nonprocreative sexual practices and were not seen as a form of identity. Very little is known about the homosexual behavior of women. See also <laughs> History <laughs> <laughs> Footnotes <laughs>